Her story is told at every edge of the world, a gen no one could elude. One time into the past and one time into the future they prayed. You have created this monster, now give her her equal. But no equal was found to fight her. So uh, this project uh, is called She Who Sees the Unknown, The Laughing Snake. Uh, and it's part of a bigger body of work, uh, which I have been working on for uh, three and a half years, called She Who Sees the Unknown. She Who Sees the Unknown is a project um, that focuses on uh, monstrous female slash genderless queer uh, figures uh, from uh, mythical and folklore uh, stories of Middle Eastern origin. Um, and what I do is that through um, an intense amount of uh, research and reading and gathering material and resources, um, I kind of find some of these figures uh, and stories that I'm interested in. Um, and then uh, I uh, write new stories um, as well as uh, what I call this process of refiguration or refiguring. So through refiguration, I try to uh, find ways to reimagine different possibilities of now and the future through this process of reimagining the past and, and history. Um, each figure uh, relates to different topics uh, in a way that I connected to also a, a different concept and idea. So, so far I work on uh, five of them, which are Huma, Yajuj, Majuj, Aisha Gandisha, The Laughing Snake, and Kabus. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, through this process of refiguration, each of these uh, figures, uh, and based on their story and what they're known as, um, connect to different uh, topics, specifically in relationship to colonialism, uh, environmental crisis, uh, as well as um, patriarchism. And a lot of the stories that I tell uh, are in, in many ways personal, but at the same time, collective experiences. Um, I just want to focus on um, the laughing snake. One thing that I also wanted to add before going to the laughing snake project is that I am interested in dystopia and I'm interested in monstrous and monstrosity because like Out of the Wood Collective says, I believe we need to engage with dystopian fiction that exploits from the white, able-bodied, colonial, heteropatriarchy that structures our world. And uh, that's something that through this process of going and finding these stories that are also very much forgotten, misrepresented, um, it can uh, bring in possibilities of imagining alternative ways of being and existing and telling our stories, um, especially for those coming from um, Arab or Iranian uh, background and, and uh, experiences. So I came across the story of the laughing snake in uh, some of the research I was doing, um, specifically looking at two resources. Um, one is this research called uh, Kitab al-Bulhan, or the Book of Wonders, and then um, which is this one, and then another one which is Book of Felicity. Um, when I came across this image, I was really in love with kind of the figure of the laughing snake herself. And up here, um, it says in Farsi the image or the figure of the laughing snake and the mirror. And as you can see here, you see these men holding this mirror in front of the snake um, and the story is that there is this snake who is very uh, powerful she's going through all these towns and cities and killing all these people and winning all these battles and no one can do anything uh, to her until some man an old man comes out of cave and says that the only way um, to kill her is to hold a mirror in front of her and when they hold a mirror in front of her and she sees her reflection, she starts laughing and she laughs for days and nights until she uh, self-destructs from uh, laughter and, and dies from laughter. 
Um, but in the tradition of this body of work, which uh, is very much about turning around power structures through the story of these figures, um, I wanted this idea of um, laughter, this idea of, of death, uh, to be something that is actually empowering. So her laughter, her death, um, is not a weakness. It's not a position of weakness, but rather it's a position where she's able to take ownership and control of her image. This reflection that is being reflected in this mirror that these you know, men are holding. Um, and so the destruction of her body is a way of perhaps like responding uh, to, to this, this ownership of the, of the reflection. Um, I was also thinking about my own experiences of that from sexual desire to um, street harassment to sexual harassment growing up in Iran. Um, and at a time also there was still a lot of um, hype around Me Too campaign. Um, and one thing that I started to notice was how much of the voices that that were being amplified, which was which was great, but how much of it was very very focused on uh, Western women and also still very much uh, white feminism. So I wanted to do a project that kind of like talked about this very personal but at the same time collective experience of um, experiencing uh, harassment and figuring out sexual desire and sort of figuring out my body growing up in in Iran uh, with you know this very like complex um, Islamic rules and laws and culture but also being from a family that was very open uh, and very open-minded and gave me a lot of um, liberty in in some ways to to experience my body as a, as a woman and to get to know my body as a woman um, but this constant clashing of that being outside in the street and this very like the words that I use that are very real um, they're very very graphic in a way they're very violent very aggressive in a way that that men would uh, you know cat call you or tell you things as you were walking in the street um, so and that's obviously still the experience of many women living in a country like Iran uh, I've, I've talked to my friends from different Arab countries I've talked to my friends uh, you know from South America and a lot of them say that that intensity uh, of kind of yeah verbal abuse and verbal uh, violence toward women body in the streets are also very intense in in the streets of again some of these like similar countries and and patriarchal cultures um so i wrote this story and uh it was a very actually intense process to write this story because in it i talk about things that are um uncomfortable still for me to talk about but it was really important for me to push myself to write this because i've talked to my friends uh you know from south america and a lot of them say that that intensity uh, of kind of yeah verbal abuse and verbal uh violence toward women body in the streets are also very intense in in the streets of again some of these like similar countries and and patriarchal cultures as you can see, and I mentioned very briefly, uh, this project, like other figures from She Was Just the Unknown series, also contains an installation uh, where I 3D model and um, 3D print, uh, you know, these figures. This is just a just a model here that I'm showing you. Um, but I, I used uh, here a professional 3D printer to, to print the, the model itself. It's actually the biggest 3D print I've ever created. Um, it's around 25 inches wide, um, height. So, yeah, and then I do post-production on this sculpture. Um, and when I showed it at, this, uh, at different exhibition spaces, um, I have inserted her, replaced her, the, her sculpture hung from the ceiling and also in a, in a room with all these mirrors around her. And then as you can see here, there is also uh, the web art, net art piece where the audience can come and sit and use a mouse um, and go, 
go through the story and also listen to the audio um, and spend time with the story inside the same space. So yeah, this is a uh, this is kind of better images of the installation uh, with the mirrors. As, as you walk into the space, you see her image repeating, but at the same time diffracting. You see your image as the audience becoming kind of at some point one or like overlap with her image. Um, and those were all intentional choices that I wanted to make about uh, this, this work. But let's focus on the hypertext narrative. The, the technical aspect of it specifically was a collaboration with uh, an artist and activist. Uh, her name is Emily Martinez, who is also a dear friend of mine. And I just wanted to show you kind of the process of how we worked together. This text starts as a linear narrative. And as you go through it and select more stuff, uh, it will start to kind of branch out to a more nonlinear narrative. And you can see here, this is a process of uh, me providing the text for Emily, but trying to kind of work with her uh, as she was the one developing the WebGL aspect of the web. Um, each hypertext word will allow for, especially again, as it starts uh, becoming multiple, multiple choice, um, it starts branching out to different aspects of the story. So depending on what word you choose on the website, what hyperlink uh, word you choose, you will go to a different part of the story. And then you can come back and repeat it based on, and then at, at, at that point choose another path. Um, so yeah, this became like a very uh, amazing collaboration with, with Emily because um, I think whenever you do this kind of work and also collaboration, it's, it's also really important for the person that you work with um, to, to kind of get you to understand your practice and themselves being a creative person. It wasn't just like a, you know, uh, collaboration between me and a, and a tech person, but also someone who, who themselves is an artist. And so that, I think, made a big difference in the way that we work together and we're able to connect and, and, and uh, work on this collaboration.